Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be working on some AI with a basic spawning code as well as some very basic AI aggression code for targeting the player and attacking them. We'll get into a little bit more complex stuff later, but for now this will work for just the initial implementation. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, we're going to go ahead and create a new script. This is going to be in the enemies folder and it'll be called enemy AI controller and it's just going to inherit from node 3D. We can go ahead and open that up. Now this is going to be our generic controller from now on and so we're we're going to need a reference to it so we're going to call the class name decorator up at the top with the enemy ai controller we're also going to go ahead and start with a couple export categories first one is going to be for the wandering settings and the second one is going to be for target tracking so first off with the wandering settings we're going to have a boolean called allow movement of wander center and all this means is that when we override the target position say we want to in a cinematic move the ai from one location to another or we want to move it during combat do we allow the center of wandering to move with that so for now now we're just going to default this to false but later on you may want to set it to true we're also going to have a wander radius which is just going to obviously be the distance we wander around that location next up we're going to have a target movement bias down here in the target tracking settings this is just going to be the distance required to move by the target in order to trigger a navigation rebuild and we're also going to have a reference to the navigation agent in order to get that rebuild as well as a reference to the current target now the current target can actually be null so if this is null then it doesn't actually have a target currently so we'll need to remember that when interacting with this in the future next up we're going to have a wandering position and like i said before this will move around sometimes but most of the time it'll just be wherever the ai spawned at we're going to have a target overwritten as well as a target override this is used in order to cancel out the movements based off of combat or based off of the wandering this is going to make it definitely go to a specific location regardless of everything else last but not least in order to measure the target movement bias we're actually going to have a last target position and this is going to be the last time we path towards the current target now we aren't going to need this ready function but we are going to need the process so let's go ahead and start there let's create a few if statements so first off we're going to check to see if we are currently target overwritten just after that we're going to create an else if if the current target e does not equal null and both of these are going to return early if true so that the process function does not continue we're going to fill these out in just a moment but let's go ahead and go down to the very bottom where the wander script is so if we are not target overwritten and we don't currently have a target we're going to check to see if the navigation is finished and if so, we're just gonna set a wander position. This just will make it wander around every time it gets to a destination. Now that function doesn't exist yet, so let's go ahead and create that. All we're going to do is select a direction randomly, then we're gonna normalize it, otherwise it would end up being a square area of wandering. And we're going to set the scale to a float between zero and the wander radius. And what we're actually going to do for that is use a random number generator to select a number between zero and one and multiply it by wander radius. So let's go ahead and do that. First off, we're going to create a new random number generator, and we're just going to call it RNG and make sure to randomize before using it. Next up, we're going to go ahead and create a vector three, and this is going to be our wander direction. Now for the vector three, we're going to give it a random F range between negative one and one for the X and Z and leave the Y axis zero. That way we don't end up with a sphere. We just end up with a disk of region that the AI can walk. Then we're going to normalize it so that it is no longer a square, and we're going to multiply it by rand F. Now rand F returns a value between zero and one, so if we multiply that by wander radius, we'll get a value between zero and the wander radius. Now all that's left is to apply that wander direction to the actual target position of the navigation agent. So make sure to use the wandering position plus the wandering direction so that that way it wanders around wherever it was last told to wander around. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and go back up here into the process function and handle the various if statements. So first off in the target overwritten, we're going to say if we're target position does not equal target override, we're gonna go ahead and set our target position to the target override. This will just make sure that this doesn't occur unless it has changed because whenever you set the target position, it creates a new path and we don't want to do that unnecessarily however if that is not the case and the navigation is finished then first off we'll go ahead and check to see if we are allowing movement of wander center and if so we're going to set it to whatever the target override was so wherever the final destination was and then we're going to go ahead and set our target overwritten to equal false as the target override is designed to kind of be a one-shot thing. So if you execute it, then it will move to that location and then it will stop and it will continue to wander at that location. Now down here in the if statement for the current target, if we do have a target currently, we're going to check to see if the last target position's distance to the current target's global position is greater than the target movement bias. And if that is the case, then we're gonna go ahead and set our last target position to equal to its global position. And then we're gonna set the target position of the navigation agent to the last target position. This is just gonna go ahead and create a new path to wherever the current target is. Now up here above the process function, we do need to create a couple new functions in order to interact with this. 
First off, we're going to create a new function for placing on mesh. This is going to be called every time the AI is spawned. And we're not going to put in the ready function because we're actually going to be calling it from the AI spawner code. And all this is going to do is make sure that the AI is currently placed on the nav mesh. To do this, we're just going to set our target position on the navigation agent to the current position, as well as going ahead and setting the wandering position. And by doing that, it will create a path to wherever the closest point on the nav mesh is to that global position. Then we're just going to set our global position to the final position of the navigation agent. So it's wherever the destination is. This is just going to snap us to the end result of that path. And that'll put us somewhere on the nav mesh. Now, following this, we can go ahead and create a function for set node target. And this is going to be our new target. And this is going to be our new target of type node 3D. And we're also going to have a Boolean in here for if we're overriding the current targeted pathing. That's the target override right here. So if we are doing that, then we want to disable the target override. So we're going to create a new if statement that says if we are target overwritten and we are setting the override targeted pathing to true, then we're just going to set the target overwritten to false. This is going to cancel out of whatever the last target position is. I'd say if we're currently in a cinematic and the AI gets shot by the player, we probably want to call this with a true on the override targeted pathing. So that way it'll snap out of this cinematic and go chase the player. And finally, we're going to go ahead and set the current target equal to new target. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and create a function called set pathing target. Now, this is going to be setting the override. We're going to give it a target position as well as override aggro. All override aggro is going to do is get past this if statement, which the if statement is just going to check to see if our current target does not equal null and override aggro does not equal true. We're just going to return so that that way, if we set our current pathing target and we're in combat, we can say override aggro equals true because we don't care if we have a target target currently, we want to reposition. And if we're just wandering around for a cinematic and the AI is aggroed, we probably don't want to override the aggro. And then the end of that function, we're just going to go ahead and set our target override to the target position and our target overwritten to equal true. And that's going to be pretty much it for now for the enemy AI controller. We're going to be coming back to this next week, but for now, this will work just fine for what we want. We are going to need a couple other scripts. However, we're going to create a new one in the enemies folder. And this is going to be called enemy spawn point .gd, and it's going to be of type marker 3D. And we're also going to create a new script in the helpers folder called trigger volume, and it's going to be inheriting from area 3D. So we can go ahead and open up both of those. So let's first off handle the enemy spawn point. And within that, we're going to go ahead and define a class name for enemy spawn point so that that way we can access it by just right clicking in the node hierarchy. And we're going to create three exports. The first one is going to be of type pack scene and it's going to be the enemy pack scene. That's the actual AI that we're spawning, as well as a Boolean for auto set target and a node 3D to set the target to. This is just going to handle basic aggro when the AI first spawn if we want to do that. We can go ahead and delete the ready and the process function. And we're going to create a new function for spawn initiated. Now, spawn initiated is going to be called by a trigger on the area 3D whenever a body enters. And because that trigger passes a node 3D, we do have to have a parameter for the collided body here. However, by putting a prefix of a underscore just before the collided body, we go ahead and just drop that and we don't do anything with it. Now in here, we're going to go ahead and spawn our new pack scene and we're going to be casting it to type of enemy AI controller. And we're just going to get the parent of this node and add child the new enemy. In order to position it, we'll go ahead and set our global rotation and global position to the global rotation and position of this spawn point. And we'll go ahead and call the place on mesh function, as well as if we have set the auto set target to true, we're going to set the target node based off of that node right there. Now, here is where I would normally say Q free this spawn point. But if you want a spawn point to spawn multiple enemies before being destroyed, this is just functional for that. So we're going to leave it as is. And later on, we may actually handle a counter on this or something like that for like a final boss situation where it's spawning lots of enemies through tunnels or something. I don't know. We'll see about that later. But for now, this will work just fine. Now for the trigger volume, we're just going to have a very basic function here. It's just going to take the trigger volume body entered. We're going to have the collided body once again prefixed by the underscore. And we're just going to call Q free. This is going to go ahead and clean up the volume so that it doesn't execute multiple times whenever the player enters and leaves a whole bunch. So we can go ahead and save that and we're good there. Now on the limb placement controller and the basic enemy navigation agent, we have a couple things to change. Over here on the basic enemy navigation agent, let's go ahead and delete the player target as it's no longer necessary, as well as the last player position. And we're going to go ahead and delete these two first two functions. Now we do need the rest of this as this will allow the AI to roll around through the environment after wherever the navigation agent is going, but it's no longer handling actually pathing because that's all handled by the enemy AI controller. Now, speaking of which on the limb placement controller, we no longer have some of the variables 
variables that we needed access to over here. So we do need to create a reference to that AI controller. And we're just gonna make that reference right here. And down here with the look at target look at point, we can go ahead and pass the enemy AI controller and reference the current target variable within that controller. And we just need to replace it at those two locations. Later on, we may need to rename this and we also need to reformat this entire script. But for the time being, this will work just fine and we should be able to save and continue. Now over here in editor, we go ahead and create our spawn point. So we can add a child to the spawn trigger volume. And this will be of type enemy spawn point. Now make sure to make it a child of the triggers. Don't let it actually be inside the volume because otherwise whenever it creates an AI, it will be childed to the volume and the volume itself will be deleted, which will result in the AI not being spawned. We just needed the location. So we can go ahead and move the spawn point over here and that looks just fine. Now over here on the script, we can go ahead and add our prefab. And we'll leave the auto set target to false right now. You can go ahead and hit that to be active and set it to the player body. But for the time being, I just want it to wander around that location. We'll save that. Now over here on the area 3D, we do need to go ahead and set our trigger volume script to the area 3D. And this doesn't really have any variables, but we do need to set the signal. So let's set the body entered signal to the spawn trigger, trigger volume underscore body entered and press OK, and then connect that. We also need to go ahead and set it up to the enemy spawn point and use the spawn initiated function and connect that. Now, later on, I may actually put the enemy spawn points being called from the trigger volume itself, as this means that for every spawn point, you have to create a new one here and you can't just have an array of spawn points, which I would very much like. So for the time being, this will be the way it is. Later on, we'll probably just have an array right here where you can just drag in as many spawn points as you want and it'll just work out of the box. But we can go ahead and save that. And over on the cultist prefab, we need to set up our enemy AI controller. So we can drag that right in on the top hierarchy. We need to reference the navigation agent 3D and we'll leave everything else default. However, on the limb placement controller, we do need to select the enemy AI controller so that it knows who to listen to and we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and hit play and see how that looks. So here we are in the tunnel and we're looking around and if we walk forward, we can walk through that collider and you should see the AI spawn right up there and it does. So that works just fine. Now be aware, I did actually find a bug with the way our current AI controller is being a little bit spazzy as it is. It currently is very sensitive to the rotation of the container. So rotating the spawn point currently does not work. That is something I'm definitely going to be resolving. I wasn't aware that it was a bug, but in the future we are going to definitely have to fix that. But for now, this will work just fine. As you can see, the AI goes goes ahead and spawns in and I've tested it with aggro and all that just works fine. So for today, this will be where we leave it. Next week, we're going to be working on the death of the AI and making it actually die properly. So, so I'm very excited for that. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.